This section of the handling training will go through some materials that are often found in the library and what to look out for in them. This is not an exhaustive list. Other materials may require more specific handling instructions, so you'll need to consult someone, likely from Special Collections or Conservation, on additional advice. We'll also go through some basic terminology, which is helpful if you ever need to describe an area of concern. We'll start off with some fragile areas to watch out for in paper materials. Parts of the item you're working with may not be fully attached to the item. The adhesive for labels and tip-down images can fail. The connection between book covers and text block leaves can also start to fail over time. Areas with folds and creases are more vulnerable to tearing, so as tempting as it might be to unfold things like dog-eared leaves in a book, it's best to leave them alone. You can try holding paper or turning over leaves in more stable areas of the paper to prevent folds and creases from becoming tears. Discoloration on paper can indicate areas of wear or damage from mold and water. Sometimes the paper will be softer and pulpier looking. Like with areas of folds and creases, you'll want to avoid putting pressure on the paper or flexing it in these areas. Another tempting thing to do is to pull off any tape you find, especially when it's partially lifted. Some areas of the tape that are more firmly attached can come off with part of the collection material. You'll also want to watch out for tears and losses, particularly those with jagged edges, which can catch onto adjacent material during handling and tear further. Brittle paper is paper that is not very flexible and can crumble very easily. Older paper can sometimes be in better condition than newer paper due to the different paper making processes. Since they have so little flexibility, try not to flex brittle paper or let it bend when you're picking it up. To prevent brittle paper from crumbling further, you can use support materials to move or turn it over. This is covered in the handling training section on using collection materials. As a general guideline, you want to avoid touching any media in case it's not firmly attached to the support. If you're working with printed books for a while, you may sometimes notice your hands have dark smudges on them. We tend to think of printed ink as being pretty stable, but even that can rub off on your hands with too much handling. Certain inks and paints or media like wax seals can flake or crack over time, whereas powdery media like pencil, pastel, and charcoal are not fully fixed to the support even when a fixative has been used. With flaking, cracking, and powdery media, it's good to try and avoid flexing these areas too much. You can also find media that remains tacky and sticks or lifts off onto adjacent materials. Sometimes, adhesives can regain tack when exposed to humidity or heat, while others, like your razor crumbs, can also become tacky over time. Forcing adhering materials apart can cause something to rip, so turn over items slowly in case of stuck media. If you're trying to show a detail to someone else, it's a good idea to point out the detail with a micro spatula or a strip of non-acidic paper both of which are available in the Special Collections reading room. Something with a thin point can direct the eye more clearly to a small detail than a finger, and this prevents you from accidentally touching the media. Sometimes media looks and is stable, sometimes it might not be. So it's always good to be wary. This 16th century manuscript leaf looks very robust, but up close you can see the ink is cracking. The piece is moved when touched very gently with a tiny brush under a microscope. So imagine what flexing this leaf or touching the media with our fingers could do. Thinking of a book like an animal can help you remember its different components. So you have a text block, often made up of gatherings, which are groups of paper or just single leaves. The text block is often protected by a cover, or you can also call it the binding. The top of the book is the head, the bottom is the tail. The side where the leaves of a text block are attached together is the spine. And the opposite side is the foredge. A book can have front and back boards or covers, and they open along what we call the joint on the outside and the hinge on the inside. 
you can also find books in the collection that don't have boards or covers at all. Specific parts of the book are usually more vulnerable to wear. The joint and hinge are weak points since there's a lot of movement in those areas when you open the boards, and their stability depends on how the boards have been attached to the book, what materials have been used, and how the book has been used over time. You can often see the material along the joint or hinge beginning to break before the boards come off. Endpapers are the leaves at the front and back of the book, protecting the text block. The paste down is the part of the end papers that's usually adhered onto the inside of the boards. End bands are found at the head and tail on the spine. They can be structural and or decorative. Zone end bands can help strengthen text block attachment, whereas adhered end bands, like the ones in some modern hardcovers, are mostly just decorative. End caps are where the spine covering material gets turned in at the head and tail. They protect the end bands and that area of the head and tail edge. End bands and end caps are other particularly vulnerable areas of the book. People tend to pull books out from the stacks by the end cap, which causes this area to break. To preserve these areas, try pulling the book out by the center of its spine. Both end bands and end caps can become brittle and snap when flexed, so watch out for them when you consider how much a book can safely open. The sides of a text block are called the text block edges. We have the head edge, fore edge, and tail edge of the text block. Some books have clasps that can catch onto an indent text block edges, so you'll want to keep clasps from dragging against the text block edge when you're opening a book. Some books have raised areas on the spine. These are called raised bands. We'll wrap up on books with some brief tips on leather and parchment. Fibers in leather become shorter as they degrade, making the leather more brittle over time. You've probably encountered some very powdery leather with no strength to it at all. We call this red rot. It's kind of like the leather version of brittle paper. Deteriorated leather can also crack during handling. As mentioned before, the joints of a book are areas to especially watch out for. You'll also find some parchment collection materials. Parchment reacts very quickly to changing humidity and become inflexible or brittle over time. If you're having difficulties in folding parchment documents or opening parchment text blocks, you should flag this for conservation to look at. Moving on to some tips for working with photographs. Unless otherwise stated, you'll always want to use gloves to avoid sweat and oils from your skin transferring onto photos. Since the emulsion surface can be very fragile, you want to avoid brushing off any dust or accretions on the photograph with your hands, even if you're wearing gloves. Try to handle the photograph only by its edges. If enclosures like transparent mylar sleeves aren't obstructing your view of the photograph during use, it's also best to just leave them inside to avoid additional handling of the actual photograph. Photographs on paper supports can be made of multiple layers of different materials, some more stable than others. These layers can react differently to flexing, unrolling, or unfolding, to crack or become delaminated. While digital prints aren't true photographs, they can be very sensitive to moisture, even reacting to the moisture in your breath if you're too close. You can also find photographs on metal or glass supports. Photographs on metal supports can be very sensitive to moisture. With glass photographs, you'll want to watch out for chipped, cracked, or broken parts and to avoid directly stacking glass on top of one another. Some of the earliest photographs can be found in cases. Like with books, you want to watch out for any mechanical components that move like hinges, clasps, and other types of fasteners. You should also look out for cracks and sharp edges in broken covered glass or deteriorating case materials. You'll encounter a wide variety of materials in scrapbooks and photo albums. On the left is a before treatment image of a scrapbook that came through the conservation lab. On the right is an after treatment detail of a corner attachment method that was devised to reattach loose photographs without re-adhering them to the scrapbook leaf. If you should come across any loose materials in scrapbooks and albums, they should be flagged to conservation so we can reattach them. Since the added material can be heavy, the entire leaf should be supported when you're turning it over. So if you're just turning over a heavy leaf by one corner, 
the weight of the leaf can cause the corner to tear. You'll also want to avoid flexing the leaves too much, as this can cause the added material to detach even after treatment. We prefer to reattach loose materials with non-adhesive corners where possible, but this means they can pop out of the corners if the leaf is flexed too much. It's also a great idea to have gloves by your side when working with scrapbooks and albums in case photographs are present. 